this morning, Carolina people is rowing to holiday traditions. Find out what it's all about coming up next. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're at the conference center on the Grand Strand campus of Ori Georgetown Technical College. We're focused on creating a special holiday and we're visiting with the professor of the Hospitality and Tourism Management Program here at Ori Georgetown Tech. I hope I got that right. Jay Rowe. That's right. Good morning, Jay. Good morning, Greg. Thanks so much for coming in this morning a couple days away from Thanksgiving. I hope you got some big Thanksgiving plans. Sure do. I Things sure are looking good. Yeah, I'll be going out to the country. Um, I grew up, of course, in Georgetown County, right. and um, I'll be going out to the country um, Thursday morning and spend time with my family. It'll be kind of a special holiday, a little sad. Um, my grandmother passed away a couple um, in first of November. Oh no! And so Just a couple this weeks will, ago. Yeah, so this will be the first time that we have Thanksgiving at her house without her. So oh, my Lord, uh, we have God. a lot to be thankful for because, of course, she was a wonderful lady and we have right. a great, big, huge family and we'll all be there to celebrate. But there'll be a little sadness, but we're excited to get oh, to be yeah. there and wow. celebrate with my family. This is your mother's mother or my your father's, father's mother? mother? Your father's mother. Yeah, so she was 93 years old. 93. Golly, Jay. Are your parents still living? Oh, yeah. They live right next door. They, I grew up, had the I was very fortunate in growing up right next door to my grandmother's house. So. You know, I grew up next door to my grandmother. She it was in an apartment building, but she lived in the apartment building next door. But our my bedroom was actually right next door to her bedroom. We just knocked through the wall. It's a, <laughs> that's amazing, Jay. So you grew up close to your grandmother? Oh, sure did. Yeah. You're not an only child, are you? Oh, no, I have two younger sisters. Two younger sisters. So you're the oldest. The oldest. Wow. Yeah, of course, if you were an only child, you could have been the right. only child. Right. That's great. Are your sisters still around here? Oh, sure. Um, one sister lives in um, Pleasant Hill area, and my other sister lives in Williamsburg County. And so, of course, they, I see them regularly, and um, it would be a great time to spend with them and my larger family. So one in Oree, one in Georgetown, and one in, in Williamsburg. Williamsburg County. That's interesting. We've got the Tri-County area the Trinity covered. there, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that's fascinating. And your and your folks have remained there and right. love that area. Oh, of course. Have they ever thought about retiring to the Myrtle Beach area or moving um, over no, here? No, my dad works over here in the Myrtle Beach, so he drives every day um, from either here or to, to here or to Georgetown. But they love it in the country, of course. That's great. That's great, Jay. And, and you all are pl planning. I know that will be melancholy, but obviously right. planning a a special holiday right. there, uh, probably to honor your grandmother right. to a great degree. When did you first get into uh, deciding that you wanted to get into education and make a difference uh, for students? Um, I've always wanted, you know, had an idea that I wanted to be a teacher. Um, my middle sister, Gay, she, I'm not quite as disciplined as she is. She decided in kindergarten that she would be a teacher, and right. she's been teaching basically she ever did since. What she, she did yeah. what she thought. Um, I kind of went around it. In a little different way, I taught high school for a while, and really? then for five years, five years ago, I had the opportunity to come back to um, Georgetown or Ori and Georgetown counties and teach here at Ori Georgetown Tech, right. and it has been a great experience. Wow, what about it is so special? Uh, um, just when you can see that um, you're changing people's lives, you're there to help people. We, of course, being a community technical college, um, our students range in ages from 17 right. all, um, up to. 65 right, really right. and you know people are coming to us for different reasons I have students who are coming because they um, maybe went to college when they were younger right. and didn't do so well right. got out you know made um, had their family and now they're back right. I have students who are coming right out of um, high school and they're very disciplined and they know exactly what they want they want to work in the hotel business, they want to work in the restaurant business, mm -hmm. they love Myrtle Beach, they right. want to work here. Um, so it's really exciting to see some of the students that we have and the range of ages and what their interests are. There's probably a lot of viewers who'd like to get back into the classroom and finish up that education that they never finished or never even started. Is it comfortable? I mean, I'm sure they want to know, is it comfortable for the students who are 45 or 55 in a classroom with students who are 17 who oftentimes younger than their own children. Right. It certainly is. I mean, we try to make it comfortable for everybody. Um, 
I have a returning student today that was noticing that she had was checking on all the other four students. So sometimes those mothering aspects or fathering aspects come out in the classroom That's a great where they're point. taking care yeah. of the younger students and making sure that they have what they need or they know what the homework assignment is. Right, right. And so it works great. And um, we try to make everyone feel comfortable. And it is a challenge when you return to school, but um, we encourage it. It's very easy right. to get in. We um, come out, go through the admissions process. Our admissions counselors are very good at working with you and what you want. Great. They test the students. And then if we have um, classes that, you know, if you need to brush up, refresh your classes right. that you can take before you go into your regular classes. And it's really a good opportunity. And it's very reasonably priced. You know, oh, you yeah. And of course, thanks to the uh, go ahead. lottery. The lottery dollars. Yes. The lottery tuition. We're glad to have Buy those. some tickets. Yeah, <laughs> buy some tickets. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. I know when I'm standing in line at a convenience store, I always thank people when they're buying that. Yeah. Because yeah. it does help us because um, you can go to school in South Carolina at a technical college right. and you receive um, lottery credit tuition even if you only want to take as few as two courses. Is that so right? if you're not sure that you're ready to come back right. but you want to test the waters, right. you can sign up for two courses. We offer those at night, um, during the day, and even online. That is tremendous. And of course, you're teaching almost exclusively here on the Grand Strand right. campus. Mm -hmm. Do you tra ever travel down to the Georgetown campus or over to Conway? Not yeah, Not we, often, we would yeah. love yeah. To, for our program to expand to those right. campuses, but right. at this time we're teaching most of our camp, um, classes Students are, are over here. Yeah. Of course, Myr Myrtle Beach is kind of the hub of tourism right. and hospitality, but you've got great institutions like the Cypress Inn and other hoteliers in the Conway area and throughout the rest of the county and down in Georgetown. Obviously, a lot of tourism coming to Georgetown County along the Waccamaw Neck. We're very, very fortunate. And of course, we need more students because right. every day I get calls from local businesses that are looking really? for employees. And recently, you know, for a while it was, we need a front desk person. Uh -huh. We need a server at our restaurant. But lately, I've been getting the calls. We need a manager. Management. We need wow. someone. We are opening some new restaurants. We right. need managers. We want local people that is who great. have been trained, and you know they're looking for hiring our students. And of course, the more graduates we have, right, the more op we have lots of opportunities for our graduates. We could almost end the interview on that. Right. That's so great. But of course, the real important thing is there. If a viewer is watching this now and wants to be a part of the program. Or if they've got to get off to school now or get family off to school or get out to work, what's the best number for someone to call? And is there a website so they can learn more about the hospital, hospitality and tourism management program? Yeah, the hospitality and tourism management program, you can reach me at 477-2000. Okay. That's 477-2000. Right. Or you can look at our college website, www.hgtc. Dot edu. We like that, hgtc.edu, that, that great, beautiful uh, sign as you're coming here right in front of the conference center and right there at the, uh, at the foundation boardroom right. and otherwise over the, the building here at the end of the driveway, uh, HGTC is right there in front of your face. It's a fantastic We'd certainly love location. to hear from you, and it's not too late to get started for our classes in January. I love that idea about it. You could take up to two classes and the, the state lottery dollars would really help offset almost entirely. Well, not about 70%. Okay. Well, and it varies yeah. you know, for every semester. More than two-thirds. Mm -hmm. That's tremendous. A lot happening with the holidays coming up. And again, I know you highlighted that melancholy aspect. For you, a lot of families oftentimes have a holiday and it's melancholy for them right. because they're remembering loved ones. So it's, uh, what are some of the things, and we don't want to talk about that. That's probably not something yes. you're teaching in the right. classroom. Well, what are some things that viewers could be doing to prepare not only for Thanksgiving this Thursday, but let's say for Christmas or for a Hanukkah, I mean, uh, the, the Jewish season? Jewish season. Um, well, of course, you know, develop some family traditions. You know, we don't all live close to our families, but we can right. develop family traditions, you know, with technology and email, you know, putting together email lists or creating fun. Um, creating contacts with our relatives prior to Christmas right. works out great. Of course, sending those pictures of the holidays or after the holidays oh, work yeah. great. Um, and again, create special memories for your family. But also we need to remember those maybe who don't have family here. And, you know, invite 
people to, if you have a large family, invite some other people to oh, be yeah. a part of your family's holiday. Right. And it, it's good for you and it's good for them it's and it nice. really makes them feel wanted. It helps our community because right. it's, we see how concerned our community is about others right. and including them in the holidays and making sure that everybody does have a good holiday. Folks, you can do that right now. Just pick up the phone, call somebody you know who may not know somebody here in the area and needs a place to be with on Thanksgiving. There's also some of the tremendous dinners and lunches that uh, the American Red Cross does in tandem with Blaine Methodist Church and First Presbyterian Church and another church over in right. Conway. They're really going all out to support the community. You know, these dinners you can volunteer to help. I mean, right. nothing can make you feel any better than giving back to someone who doesn't have as much as you do. Right. And, um, and sometimes we, of course, we hear it, but we get more out of giving than the oh, person yeah. we give to. Oh, yeah. That was highlighted last Thursday here. We were here, and there was a big group here at the uh, Association of Fundraising Professionals had a luncheon for National Philanthropy Day here at Ori Georgetown Tech on the campus. Even Tom Mazur, yeah. columnist with the Herald and, of course, the uh, chairman of the foundation board for Ori Georgetown Technical College was recognized as one of the uh, local uh, philanthropist of the year nominees, which was great, an individual, and a lot of other folks associated with the college here doing great things in the area, Jay. It must be thrilling for you right. to see these folks uh, and the efforts they go to. It is, and our student, various student organizations do things throughout the year right. to help people in the community. Yeah. And that's one thing, you know, as we focus on the holidays, we need to continue those activities all year. You right. know, the needs that we have at the holidays also extend throughout the whole year. So as we look to January and our resolutions, think about helping people all year, not just at the time of the holidays. Those are great things. Of course, for folks that have seen your etiquette column and coastal business life for the longest time, I think since they kicked off the magazine, you've had a column in there. And of course, you were with us in January when we were at the Honorable Bob Grabowski's Myrtle Beach Lighting over there on the bypass and saw that the, the beautiful story there, but also it was able to hear you talk about some of the great things happening. The column is still a centerpiece for right. you. If someone hadn't seen it recently, what are some of the etiquette tips we need to be thinking about over the holidays? Um, gift giving. You know, I think it was last year we wrote about, think if you, if you are giving gifts, um, think about the gifts that it suits the person. You know, right. what about alcohol? Oh, yeah. Do you give alcohol? Well, only to someone who you know would appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And... You know, is that an appropriate gift? Well, to certain people it right. is, to others right. it's not. And so be aware if you're giving something such as alcohol that it is that it will be received in um, the manner in which you are, are giving it. That's a great point. That's a great point. How about holiday decorations, Jay? Do you have any thoughts on that or is that not really related to hospitality oh, yeah, of course. and tourism management? It yeah, is. It is. Yeah, I mean, because we, you know, how do you, you decorate, make, yeah. you know, decorate for Christmas right. for for the holidays yeah um, yeah it's when you look at your business you know are you promoting the holidays um, how what ways can you do that without offending you know we get into the politically correct right. terms of holidays and we have to be considerate of others oh, yeah. um, we now have a truly international community right and so spend the time you know sharing about your holiday but learn about other people's cultures as well. Mm -hmm. You know, they might be celebrating Christmas, they, but they might celebrate it in a different way. Right. Or they may not celebrate Christmas at all, right. but Hanukkah, or they might have just finished Ramadan. And so look at what they are doing and the traditions that they have established. And, you know, there might be something that you can make a part of your holiday traditions as well. That's a great point. You know, the trees uh, can often be a big piece of folks' lives. I remember Coastal Business Life did a big special on Christmas trees, mm -hmm. which went so well. Haley and his family out there near Ainer right. that have the beautiful Christmas tree farm. And then uh, interestingly related to that, I just saw that one of the largest retailers in the southeast was uh, was beaten up because their, uh, their catalog right. had family trees and said right. Christmas trees in there. And, there were only references to Christmas twice in this entire big holiday catalog. So a lot of folks are, as you said, political correctness becomes an issue. But you've got to think about the basics, whether it's a Christmas tree, a family tree, a, a Ramadan, or a Hanukkah tree. You still can uh, 
do some great things by decorating. Right, and it's a part of giving. You know, it's a way to celebrate, and that's you know to celebrate the good things that we have. Right. And no matter what holiday is, that's what we need to think about, particularly at Thanksgiving, all the blessings that we have received. Oh, yeah. And um, so as we prepare for Thanksgiving, we really truly do need to give thanks. Um, Okay, what's your background? When, when you got out of college, had you thought about to always, uh, I know we talked about the ability to get in and having taught a little bit at, there in high school and then uh, wanting to come back, but what's your background? What gives you the, uh, the ability to be in front of the classroom? Have, have you been in the industry yourself? Yeah, about 20 years. Um, my really? first job out of college, I worked for the South Carolina Farm Bureau, and I was a meeting planner and a volunteer committee coordinator. Really? So I did volunteer training and... We did lots of things with holidays. You traveled the state. I traveled all or the southeast. I traveled all 46 counties in South Carolina, and then I um, that wasn't big enough for me, so I moved to Georgia and traveled <laughs> all 159 counties in you Georgia. You are hitting. That's and, uh, more counties than North and South Carolina right. combined. 146 in these two states. Right. But uh, Georgia has 159, and we had a chance to visit all of those. And you've actually been through every single one every, of them? One, all 159 counties. Wow, Jay, you need a medal, dude. <laughs> yeah, that's and it's a, I mean, Georgia's a great state, but when yeah. I got an opportunity to come back to South Carolina, I was certainly yeah. glad yeah. to do that. That's tremendous. And what pulled you back to South Carolina? Um, the opportunity to teach okay. uh, yeah. and um, be back home. I think I remember, weren't you down to the Carriage House Club at Litchfield Plantation yep, at one time? That's where a our fancy exclusive club. Fancy exclusive down there. club. I don't, Beautiful. But we, um, I was there for 12 years. Is that and, right, Jay? Um, had a great time there. What was your role there? Um, I started as, um, as a server and then moved into management. Right. And when I left, I was the club manager and I worked with the weddings that they had there. Is that right? Can folks ever, how, do, how would someone join that place? Is um, it a big secret? No, it's not a big secret. You just call, I'm trying to think of the number. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> not to put you on the spot, yeah. but they can look through the phone yeah, book. Yeah, Carriage House Litchfield Club. Plantation, and they still do Carriage have the membership Club. organization, uh, the, but it's only um, $40 now. I think very it's reasonable. $35 for many years. Now right. it's gone up to $40. It's gone up to 40 Well, that's a pretty big right. increase. That's a double-digit increase, by the way, but that's... That's exciting. So folks can actually get in there. They've got the beautiful library. Great, and it's a great place for holiday entertaining. Probably for weddings. Mm -hmm. Do they weddings. have any weddings down oh, there? Of course they do. Great. And uh, and that's you know we do holiday weddings as well. It's a great way to create memories. Of course, sometimes people say they don't want to get uh, married or have birthdays during the holidays because then they only get one gift. <laughs> <laughs> That's a real consideration, yeah. A good point, a good point. I think I saw, don't you also have a business that helps plan events and weddings? Yeah, we do um, weddings, We primarily in this area, right? Um, but we do travel. I've had done some weddings down at Jekyll Island, Georgia, Is that up right? in the Washington, D.C. area, but wow. primarily in... Um, along the Grand Strand. And the great thing is that gives you the practicality of being out in the workplace, being in the marketplace, right. interfacing with vendors and otherwise, so you can get that practical experience yeah. to and your that's students. What, that's one thing it's we encourage is hands-on experience yeah. and talking about, you know, I can, you know, something can happen at a wedding on the weekend right. and then, you know, Monday morning I can talk about that in, in class the classroom. and relate yeah. it to, you know, the subjects that we're covering. 843-477-2000 is right. the best number to call. They mm -hmm. just asked for Jay Rowe to learn more about the program right. or anyone else in the hospitality and tourism management right. to department there. Of course, hgtc.edu and uh, visiting the website there to learn more about some of the tremendous programs. You know, as you think about, obviously, holiday decorations are a big deal. Any other tips for holiday parties, Jay? What are some of the things that folks need to think about when they're going to parties over the holidays. If you're going to parties, of course, be aware of drinking and driving. People that, don't do that. Well, yeah. I'm afraid they still I'm do. Afraid you're right. I'm yeah. afraid they still do, but be aware of that. Um, if you're serving alcohol, make sure that you're also serving food. Right. That's the key Good. thing. Yeah. Um, because, you know, what a way to spend the holidays. Right. Great to put a damper on the holidays if you have an accident related to alcohol. That's one of the biggest issues. Alcohol is such a prevalent problem and we talked, we had a guest on the show, Woody Ford, recently from the Crown Reef Resort who was highlighting thanks to a young lady who unfortunately had been killed by a drunk driver going over 100 miles per hour on Ocean Boulevard. He wouldn't have gotten a liver and so there was something positive about it, albeit the terrible experiences of having lost a loved one 
and obviously drunk driving impacting so many. So clearly the holidays are a heightened time of right. awareness and obviously uh, the, the need to be really vigilant and uh, making sure that your loved ones in the workplace are very careful and not to imbibe too much and don't hesitate to take those keys away. Right. Or Just take them call away. a cab. Call a cab. And we do offer serve safe training here um, in our continuing ed program. If there are individuals or businesses who would like their employees trained, we do offer that service here. It provides an alcohol awareness training to teach um, employees how to properly serve and serve safe. That's a great point. That's and um, great. that's one of the things that all of our students, when they go through the hospitality program, they do earn the serve, um, serve safe alcohol certificate. That's a great point, Jay. Yeah. Our, yeah, with Thanksgiving just 48 hours away, are folks uh, oftentimes now eating out for Thanksgiving? Yeah. Eating out is very popular. Mm -hmm. And another thing is technically is called home replacement meals. <laughs> wow. Doesn't that sound yeah. exciting? Yeah. <laughs> Commonly known as takeout. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, a lot of um, different restaurants and um, food service facilities do offer meals that they, you can prepare, that they will prepare for you or partially prepare, and then you take it home. So that takes a little bit of the stress out of uh, preparing the holiday meal. So you don't necessarily know, have to know how to cook that turkey or to what wow. is the correct internal temperature the turkey must yes. reach to be safe. Right. But you can purchase that. Um, a lot of people are going out. I do want to encourage you, if you are going out for a holiday meal, remember the people that are there serving you because they are away from their family or their friends and they are providing a service to you so that you can be there with your family or your friends. So maybe be a little more patient right. that time, right. be a little more generous with your right. gratuity yes. because they are there to serve you. And um, they, um, a lot of times, one of my students today was talking about not getting to go home for Thanksgiving because she traded off and she's going home for New Year's Eve. So mm. she'll be working Thanksgiving Day. So as you as you go out um, on Thursday and you see people working, thank them for being there to provide you that the services. That is a very good point, Jay. I'm so glad you mentioned that because you're right. A lot of folks do take that for granted. I remember even last Thanksgiving we were at the Crown Reef Resort, a big uh, with the Montrose family, the Villa Romana family, and all of their loved ones and many of their own wait staff that they took out to celebrate, but there were a lot of folks having to put that tremendous buffet together and uh, I bet a lot of us didn't think to thank them for, for being there. That's a great point. We'll definitely do that if we get out. You know, and of course you talked about starting new traditions. They don't have to be in the household. They right. can be out. I think Charlene's wing, uh, our columnist will be with us tomorrow. I'm looking forward to talking about her plans for Thanksgiving because I think one of them that she's told me about in the past is that she and her family go out uh, to bowl. They go bowling, which is a big deal. I think Don Shunk, I'm trying to prepare for his interview later this week, I think he'll be with us actually on Thanksgiving Day, and I think they go out and see a movie every Thanksgiving, too. Well, there's certain uh, traditions. They can be as simple as bowling and as, uh, as passive as uh, sitting there watching a movie. Right. I had one of my friends down in Charleston, his family always had a yard sale on Thanksgiving afternoon. Is that right? <laughs> so, wow, that's good thing. And cleaning out the cleaning clutter. out the closet, yeah. getting ready to go shopping the next day. So <laughs> they would have a yard sale on Thanksgiving afternoon as right. people were riding around. And up would pop the yard sale. Yeah, yeah. Of course, y'all's traditions there. Not to focus on the melancholy, but what have been some of the traditions y'all do? The Rowe family's been doing year after year there in uh, Pleasant Hill. Um, well, we always have. A big deal, of course, right. and um, at Thanksgiving, Christmas, and then a few years, probably about 20 years ago, we started a barbecue. Is um, that right? The second Tuesday, I mean, excuse me, the second Saturday of December, where we invite you know, our friends and family in the community to come and share in this meal with our family, and it was our way of giving back not only to our family, but also to our friends and the people in our community. And, and folks show up, Jeff. Oh, yeah. They come. <laughs> Who's the who's the big roaster there? Oh, who's doing the barbecue? Oh, my father. Yeah. Your dad. I mean, my dad is the he's chief. He's a master. My, he's the chief barbecue master, yeah. and I I know how to do it, but it's not my favorite. Yeah. Because <laughs> you have to get up pretty early, and yeah, uh, sure, all that. But it's not as difficult as it was when I was a kid, where we spent all night making coals out of the oak wood and shoveling the coals under the pig. 
We've changed a lot because we do cook it with gas. That's great. Any other quick tips for folks to think about if they can't do a special barbecue in the middle of December or any other quick tips for folks? Just remember others during the holiday season who may be less fortunate. And sometimes less fortunate doesn't mean that they have less money than you do. It might mean that they don't have people caring for them. So go out of your way to care for the others to care for others during the holidays. Those are great words. Jay, thanks so much Thank for being you. with us this morning. I'm sorry we've run out of time. Okay, Greg. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Stay tuned to more Carolina people with Jay Rowe, a professor here at Ori Georgetown Technical College in the Hospitality and Tourism Management Program. Coming up next. You heard him talk about it. Holidays at home, holidays at restaurants, Creating a holiday season, very special, of course, those big words of developing traditions. Developing traditions, think about that, but also the really special words Jay talked about on Thanksgiving, on Christmas, whatever your special holiday you're focused on, think about giving thanks, giving thanks to the others around you, particularly the, the many folks that are serving you, whether you stop at a gas station driving to Pleasant Hill and you walk in there, there's someone that's taking your money or helping you ring up your credit card if you're going out to eat or going out bowling or going to a movie, there's someone there selling you the ticket or feeding you some popcorn, serving you some popcorn or a drink. Just thank them for being there on that your special day where you're taking it easy. They're out there working for you. Remember them. 843-477-2000 to learn more about the hospita Hospitality and Tourism Management Program here at Ori Georgetown Tech as well as going online to hgtc.edu. Jay Rowe, the Hospitality Educator of the Year by the Hospitality Association of South Carolina. He's doing it every day.